Hey friends, happy Sunday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor. I'm a stay-at-home wife and mom and I share these What's for Dinner videos every Sunday to hopefully give you some new meal ideas and to motivate you to cook more for your family. I always share pretty easy recipes. I don't like to spend too much time in the kitchen, but I do enjoy cooking and trying new things. So if that interests you, I hope you will subscribe down below. As always, any recipes that I mention will be linked in the description box. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's What's for Dinner. First up on Friday night, we had spaghetti. Super simple and easy. Just brown up some ground beef. I like to season it with some Italian seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder, and red pepper flakes. And then I just used a jar of marinara from Aldi and served it over some spaghetti noodles with some Parmesan cheese. And this night I actually cooked up two pounds of ground beef. So I didn't do the seasoning until after everything was browned. And then I set half of it to the side so that I could use it for another meal this week. So save time for that dinner. Saturday, we had some shake and bake pork chops and some roast potatoes and a salad. So I started off with potatoes because they take a little bit longer to cook. I just wash all of these potatoes and then I am dicing them up. I try to do them in pretty even size pieces, about an inch. So that way they all cook at like the same rate. So I'm just going to dice those up and then I get them in a bowl. And then to the bowl, I'm going to add whatever seasoning you want, really. I like to do paprika and a little bit of Tony's Creole seasoning sometimes. Uh, the Badia Complete or the 21 Seasoning Salute from Trader Joe's. Those are good, like all-purpose seasonings. Also usually do a little bit of salt and pepper and garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika and then a little bit of olive oil and just toss all that together. I don't use everything that I listed, but you can just use an all-purpose seasoning if you want, um, or you can just combine a bunch of stuff together. But just season it how your family likes it, and then I put these in the oven on a sheet pan on 425 for about 35 minutes. They get soft and crispy on the outside. Now for our pork chops, typically I buy like boneless pork chops, but I was not willing to pay the price that Kroger was charging for boneless pork chops when I had done my grocery haul earlier in the week. So I just bought some bone in ones because I had been really wanting pork chops and I really wanted to use the shake and bake mix that I've had in the cabinet for a while. So I just went in and cut the bones off of these pork chops. I could have left them on, but I just didn't feel like dealing with them after they were cooked. So I just went ahead and cut them off before I cooked them. And then I'm using this Parmesan garlic um, shake and bake mixture from Aldi and you just put it in the bag that it comes with. It says it's a chicken coating mix but anytime it's like chicken you can also use it for pork you just have to adjust the cooking time. So I put the mixture in the bag shook my pork chops in there and then there was quite a bit of excess like mixture so I patted like some of it on top of the pork chops just to give them a little bit more and then these went in the oven on 425 for 25 minutes and then I did broil them at the end for about two minutes. I think this was the first time we tried this Parmesan garlic shake and bake mixture and we really liked it. Lily was a little bit disappointed that there wasn't leftovers of the pork chops. And of course the roasted potatoes were good. They're always good. And everybody had salad with their dinner except for Lily. She just had some fresh veggies on the side. Sunday night we had nachos for dinner, which is definitely a family favorite. So I've mentioned before, I always buy the giant thing of Rico's nacho cheese at Sam's Club, separate it out into quart sized Ziploc baggies and freeze it. And then I'll thaw it in the fridge overnight and then it heats up wonderfully on the stove. And then this is where I use that other pound of ground meat that I had cooked on spaghetti night. I just added it to my pan with some taco seasoning and some water and let that simmer for a little bit. Got some refried beans with some cheese and then we had like lettuce and pico and sour cream and some taco sauce. And, and this is what all of our plates look like. Lily has been eating sour cream and taco sauce and pico on her nachos. Elijah has got the lettuce on there and some taco sauce. And then I've got a little bit of everything. 
Monday night was a crock pot meal. We did a barbecue pulled pork in the crock pot. This is super simple. You're just going to want like some sort of pork loin or shoulder roast or pork butt, whatever. I can't remember what this was exactly. I think it was a bone in shoulder and it was slightly frozen still because I didn't pull it out early enough, but it, everything worked out fine. I just like to season it all over with some sort of rub. I'm actually using the Anti No No's grilling seasoning, which is delicious on pork. I used it on the ribs like a month or so ago. Delicious. And I get that all rubbed in and then I just top it with about half of a bottle of barbecue sauce, put it on low and let it cook for like eight hours. And then after the eight hours, you can just go in and shred it up. I like to use tongs, remove the bone since this was a bone in one and then pick out any large pieces of fat and then just shred it up. And usually I'll let it sit in the crock pot like in that liquid for about 30 minutes before serving. I love crock pot meals and this is one of the easiest ones that I make and it's always very good. We typically do crock pot meals about once a week or at least once a week I should say. They The kids have karate once a week and on those nights I always do a crock pot meal but with it getting into cooler weather I usually do crock pot meals more often. We were supposed to have martial arts or karate this night but it got canceled so I had to like rework my meal plan a little bit and come up with another crock pot meal later in the week. To go with our pulled pork sandwiches, we just had a can of baked beans and some Doritos Cool Ranch. The kids actually like to put cheese on their pulled pork sandwiches. I don't. I just add a little bit more barbecue sauce and leave it at that. Tuesday night, I made Tex-Mex chicken and rice casserole. This is a family favorite that I've been making for over 10 years, but I had to do some little twists on it because I was out of some stuff. I thought I had onion, but I was out. So I heated up a little bit of olive oil and then I added in some dried minced onion, let that saute for like 15 seconds, and then I added in my boxed rice a -roni. And I should have also added in the seasoning for the rice a but I forgot. So I added that in later, but it should be added in when you add in the rice and then you just like let it saute for a couple of minutes, get brown and toasty. Then you add in your chicken broth and water, let that come to a boil and then turn it down to low, cover it with a lid and let it simmer for about 18 minutes. After that, you add in the rest of your ingredients. Typically you would do like some cut up tomato and a can of diced green chilies. Instead this time I just use one can of Rotel and then I use some canned chicken. You could use like rotisserie chicken or any cooked chicken you have on hand, but canned chicken does fine in this if you like canned chicken. And then I added in some seasonings. It's some oregano and some chili powder and some cumin and some pepper. Give that all a good stir and then I'm gonna transfer it to a casserole dish top it with a bunch of cheese, and then throw it in the oven, I think on 375 for about 25 minutes till the top is nice and bubbly. The recipe for this can be found online, so I will link it down below for y'all, but it's also from the Better Homes and Gardens, like the Promise Edition cookbook. I've had since I was 17 or 18. It's very special to me. It was a gift from my dad. And this recipe is also special to me because it's one of the recipes that I made from the cookbook that he liked. So I've been making this for forever and we love it. We like to serve it topped with a little bit of salsa sometimes and then some sour cream and some chips on the side. The chips are really good, like crushed up on top of it too. Wednesday night we had some lemon pepper air fryer salmon and some garlic parmesan couscous. So for the salmon, I just get it on a foil lined air fryer basket and then I am brushing it with some of these Chef Chamois garlic butter. I saw the lemon and herb one at Sam's Club recently and I think that'd be really good on this as well, but I have not tried that one yet. So once I got it brushed with the butter, then I sprinkled it with a little bit of garlic powder and then some lemon pepper seasoning and then some salt. And the only reason I did salt because my lemon pepper is a salt-free one. If yours isn't salt-free, you might want to skip the salt. And then I just topped each piece with a slice of lemon and then I put it in the air fryer on 375 for about 13 minutes. That's going to depend on the thickness of your salmon though, how long you cook it. I would just keep an eye on it after the 10 minute mark. 
for the garlic parmesan couscous i just brought some salted water to a boil and then i cooked up one cup of the pearled couscous when it was done i just drained it and returned it to the pot over low heat and then i like to add in some of that chef chamois garlic butter or you could just do regular butter and then some garlic powder and some parsley a little bit of salt and pepper and some parmesan cheese To go with our salmon and our couscous, I just made a can of green beans, and then we also had some of these everything croissants on the side that I bought on Markdown at Kroger. Thursday night, we had sausage tortellini soup, which was one of my family's favorite soup recipes. And this recipe actually has its own separate video, but I am doing it a little bit different this time because I am turning it into a crock pot recipe because we had martial arts this night and I wanted to be able to come home and just like quickly have dinner ready. So I'm starting off by browning one pound of ground sausage with a little bit of pepper, oregano, parsley, and dried chives. I'm just gonna let that brown up and cook completely. Meanwhile, in the crock pot, I'm getting together my broth. So I do six cups of hot water with six teaspoons of the Knorr chicken bouillon to make a chicken broth. And then I add in one can of evaporated milk and then I do some more pepper and then about a tablespoon each of the oregano, parsley, and dried chives. And then I just mix that all together. And then when my sausage was done, I drained it and added it to the crock pot with this. And then I just left this on low for four hours while we were gone. And if you were gonna make this yourself, if you had time and you were home, you could add in frozen tortellini about an hour before you're ready to serve and it would get cooked nicely in the crock pot. Since I wasn't going to be home an hour before I was ready to serve it, when I came home, I just brought a pot of salted water to a boil and then cooked up half of this bag of cheese tortellini. This is a 36 ounce bag, so... Half of that is what I cooked up. And then I also cooked up a loaf of Italian bread from Aldi. It's like one of those take and bake ones. You just stick it in the oven for about 10 minutes. Once my water came to a boil, added in the tortellini. They only take like three minutes to cook. Once they're floating, you know they're done. So once they were done, then I added them to my crock pot and we were ready to eat. We always like to serve this soup with some Parmesan cheese on top and then the bread to dip in the soup. As I said, it's one of our favorite soups. We make it many times in the cool like weather seasons. Um, this and the steak and potato soup are probably our top two favorite soups ever. And that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. If you got some new ideas for some recipes to try, let me know which ones you plan on trying in the comments down below. And also let me know if you made it here all the way to the end. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you in the next one. Bye.